It's Dave from Split. Last week I said I would start a two-part series on progressive delivery, and we're going to do that right now. Pretty much most of this story starts with the notion of continuous integration. So when continuous integration began, it was kind of a radical idea, which was that developers should merge their changes as often as possible, ideally once a day or more, into the main branch and run a series of tests against that in order to find problems much faster, therefore get away from deferring problems till later, deferring merge issues till later, deferring bugs till later. And there's a great quote from Martin Fowler that said, continuous integration doesn't get rid of bugs, but it does make them dramatically easier to find and remove. So continuous integration required three things, right? It required a central source repo. It required uh, tests, mostly at the unit test and the integration test level that could be run automatically and very fast because if they didn't return results quickly, the whole idea of fast feedback wasn't really valid and people wouldn't want to do a build if it took two or three or four hours, right? And a CI server or a service to run the build and the test so that uh, you wouldn't really have to worry about it. You would just check in your code and what needs to happen would happen. It challenged people to focus on building smaller parts of their solution at a time and also to use mocks or uh, virtual services and stuff to be able to have bits of code which on their own could be kind of checked in and tested and validated, right? So that was CI. And I don't think anybody would question whether CI is a good thing or whether a central source repo is a good thing. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, it was a radical idea, but now it's sort of, you know, it's stable stakes, right? Then along came continuous delivery. And that was the radical idea that deployments shouldn't be a labor-intensive, high-drama, multi-hour thing that has to happen outside of normal business hours. Uh, one of my favorite quotes on this is from Jez Humble. Jez gave an interview with Kimber Lancaster before the Decisions Conference in 2018, and he said, uh, yeah, you know, the question was, so you wrote this book, Continuous Delivery, literally wrote the book, with David Farley, uh, and, and why'd you do that, right? And he said, the reason that Dave and I wrote the book in 2010 was that we just didn't want to spend our weekends in data centers doing releases anymore. We thought it was a shitty way to spend our time, and it was miserable for everyone. We actually want to enjoy our weekends. It was really about making releases reliable and boring. The thing about that was figuring out a way to automate how code gets into production without having it be a manual fire drill forced more focus on automation, focused simplification. You can't have a lot of crazy complex stuff and get it all done quickly and, and, and automate it in the first place. And process improvement, both with the people and with the systems. And that leads to kind of my favorite second quote from Jez, which is, it reduces the ongoing cost of evolving your software because you're fundamentally doing is reducing the transaction cost of pushing changes. So you can put changes out more often at a lower cost. And that's fairly transformative, right? If you can actually do releases really often and not have it be a big deal, then you can be in a faster feedback loop, which really is the fundamental thing we're going for in the first place. I want to try something. I want to get it out there. I want to see how it goes. Um, and we're not talking about fundamental testing like is it buggy. We're talking about I want to try something and see whether it behaves with users the way I'm expecting. Uh, and I want to figure that out uh, with the least amount of drama and cost, right? So after continuous uh, delivery came the idea of um, continuous deployment. Again, another radical idea. And maybe for most, this is still kind of radical, which is that what if a change that a developer could ma makes could make it all the way to production unimpeded by humans? And the only way you can really do this is if your uh, maturity level of your code review and your testing is really, really high so that you have a very low probability of pushing something out to production that causes grief. This is kind of, kind of where we are in terms of CI and CD and CD, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, right? So along the way through continuous integration and continuous delivery and continuous deployment, practices emerge to what some people will say limit the blast radius, right? If you think about it, no matter which of these approaches you're using, if you're trying to ship more often and push code out all the way to the user more often, whether it's automated or manual or whatever, you might run into problems more often that would hurt your users. So what if you could limit the blast radius? What if you could limit the exposure of those problems so that it only hurts a few users and you detect it quickly before you ramp it up to everybody else, right? That uh, is, you know, sort of the, the latest radical idea. And, and progressive delivery isn't really a new thing. It's this way as a new term to describe something that's been emerging for quite some time. The thing about progressive delivery is, is that, again, we want to contain the blast radius and we also want to learn quickly. And if you look at the genesis of the term, which was when Sam Guckenheim from Azure DevOps 
was talking to James Governor of Red Monk. He used the term progressive experimentation to describe the stage deployments around the world and also the use of feature flags to gradually expose functionality to particular users. Um, and remember, he's using the term progressive experimentation and he focused on what can I learn? So A, things might go wrong, but what's the, how can I learn as much as possible about that as part of the process? Because the reason we're turning the crank faster is we want to learn faster and iterate more intelligently. Right? Okay, so that's all I'm going to cover today. Next week, we're going to get into a little more detail about sort of shades of progressive delivery. Um, whether it's 50 shades or not, I don't know. That might be too controversial. But definitely, we'll talk about shades of progressive delivery next week. Hope you have a great week. Take care.